to sit up tall. I'll kind of do it a little bit of an introduction yeah. to get us into it. Are you ready? Okay. okay. Hi, my name is Jana Sweet. Some people call me Striper Mom. And this is Oz Fox, a striper, Sin Dizzy, and Vinyl Tattoo. And I look at this time together with Oz and I as a special time because we have a bit of a history together. And um, especially uh, <laughs> going way back when I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember lots of special things. Um, this guy is known as the phenomenal axe man of Striper, and I was known as a band's manager for seven years, so that's where our history kind of comes into play. And we're going to be sharing a bit of those memories with you today as much as we can. And this, we don't have cue cards, so this is my cheat sheet right here. Oh, it's all good. Don't worry about it. Okay. They're not going to get upset. Does it seem, Oz, like almost 30 years <laughs> since Striper formed? Um, well, you know, a lot's happened since then. I know. I mean, I've already been... This is my, oh, my second marriage now. All my, yeah. kids, all my kids are growing yeah, up. They're all grown up. i got grandkids now. And I remember when Paul, your oldest one, was a baby. Oh, yeah. And it seems like yesterday. Oh, I know. I know. It's, it's pretty pretty wild, huh? Oh, yeah. Do, if, but when you think about it and you look back on it, does it seem like 30 years? Almost. I, I, I don't know. I guess I don't think about it like that. I, I just oh. I just think, wow, you know, um, here we are today still doing it. Yeah. And, and and it's nice to reflect on all of the uh, the old days and yeah. laugh about some of the stuff that went on and and we learned a lot. We sure learned. Oh yeah, you quite guys, a bit. you guys are real seasoned pros. Yeah, well, you know, really seasoned. Been around, been around the block a few times, you know. So. Okay. <laughs> Besides time with your family, what has it? Do you feel personally that it has cost you to be in Striper? Mm, no. Uh, uh, well, definitely my hearing. <laughs> my hearing is definitely messed up. I actually damaged this year on the 2009 tour. Did you? Yeah, yeah. We had some in-ear monitors, and um, uh, unfortunately the mixer that we used wasn't set up properly, and I blew my oh, left wow. ear uh, out pretty bad, and I can't really hear too well. I it. didn't know that. Yeah, I got a constant ring in it, you know, oh, so yeah. that's kind of wild, and... You know, so that's pretty much, you know, the worst thing I would say. Yeah. Um, I, but everything else, I mean, you, you know, I, I, I think of everything as, as just kind of like this, <laughs> kind of like this adventure that you're going yeah. on and, yeah. and, and, uh, and, and it, things come up, situations come up and, and I really, because I'm a man of faith, I, I, I know God's taken me through it all yeah. and ups and downs I've just yeah did what I could to trust him and and I'm still here and I'm still doing music and it always has a way of working out oh yeah right? absolutely okay yep. um, and what has it gained you what do you feel that it has gained you besides the obvious hmm well I mean obviously nothing can compare to the the, the popularity notoriety and, and reputation right that you get from being in a band like Striper. Yes. Um, and, and, and to be honest with you, I, I've done pretty well at keeping, um, I guess the word is uh, uh, just, um, uh, I've been able to persevere with that. Okay. I haven't lost too much respect. And, and, That's a good thing. And, and I've done a lot and to try to keep that going. I've keep, kept a lot of special relationships in my life. Good. Um, close. Good. Um, a lot of, uh, I mean, I'm, now I'm friends with a lot of pastors and people who probably in the early days didn't know what to think of us. Yes. But now, because of the history, um, they all know me, they respect me, and, yes. and, and many times I've connected with all of them, and, and I'm still good friends with a lot of oh, those that's guys. that's wonderful. And, and newer pastors as well. I mean, when I moved into this Las Vegas area, which is where I live now, yeah. um, several of the pastors in town, younger guys, yeah. grew up with, with Striper. 
That's a bonus. Oh, oh, it's absolutely cool. And and so now it's like really awesome to be able to, um, um, you know, just just connect with them and have them sh tell me and encourage me uh, 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 how much the, the band wow. meant to them wow. and what it did for their lives and, and even brought them into being a pastor or, or whatever, you know. So it's touched many, many other people that you wouldn't even suspect. Yeah, yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. And probably more than I would know even to this day. Right, I'll, that's right. I probably won't know until we get to That's eternity. right. I know. Yeah. I, I have the same feeling that none of us will really know the full impact until we see the Lord. Yep, absolutely. Now, tell us, I, I know you've talked about this before, but tell us a little bit more about how you met Bob and Mike. Yeah, Robert, uh, I, met, I met him first. Uh, because we both went to the same uh, junior high school. It's okay. actually intermediate school, okay. uh, Catherine Edwards. Catherine Edwards. Yes, over oh, in Whittier, West I Whittier. I remember that. Yeah, and so, um, I don't know, I just, there was one uh, lunch time, uh, at lunch when I was in seventh grade, they, 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 they said uh, that uh, one room would have a, a open games, you know, to go in and play games. So I went in there, and um, Robert was sitting at a table uh -huh. there, and, uh, and um, you know, he uh, was sitting there in front of a chess board, and I went up and I said, hey, you want to play some chess? And he's like, yeah, let's play some chess. Cool. You know, so I sat there, and I'm playing chess with Robert, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, back then he had that bowl haircut. I don't know if oh, you remember. Oh, yeah, I remember. I, I, almost, I almost blew it. I almost said to him, uh, you get any salad with that haircut? <laughs> Good thing I didn't say that. He probably wouldn't have liked me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so that's how I met Rob. Well, it wasn't until uh, when I got into high school. Um, I was already kind of playing guitar, and I was kind of jamming around with a lot, of trying to show off you know, my chops to a lot of different people. And um, um, and then there was Robert playing in the high school rock band. Yeah, what was the name of that band? That was PT Express. I remember <laughs> that. I remember that. Because I would have to sign these little things for him to go off uh, the school grounds to go do a gig. Yeah. So I remember that. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah. Um, did you ever get to see them play? Oh yeah, yeah. They, they played at the school quite a bit. Oh, okay. Um, during assemblies and you know different things, they were jamming during lunchtime and cool. and all this stuff. They had, I mean, the 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 um, the director, the school band director, um, marching band and all that. I think his name was Kantu. Uh, that's what I think I remember his name being, something like that. And he he was all into doing this rock band class. Yeah. So uh, obviously Robert was the drummer, and the, the guitar player was a guy named Steve Gaines. Oh. And he was really good. Like Jack, uh, the teacher was like Jack Black then uh, in School of Rock. Kind I of wouldn't like. say he was Hispanic, so <laughs> or like Santana. <laughs> but anyway, no. But anyway, um, so that was really when I remember hanging out with Rob. He was hanging out with a handful of guys. There was a guy named. Uh, Larry Richardson and a guy oh, named yeah. uh, a guy named Ray. Uh, what was his last name? I can't remember his last name. He was a tall blonde tall, guy. Tall blonde guy. Yeah. That we used to call. Um, he he said he wanted to be a paperback writer. Is that what Mark you? somebody? Oh was no no you're thinking of uh, oh yeah you're thinking of um, yeah yeah uh, Mark yeah I know you're talking about that's not the same okay well he did hang out we all hung out at this yeah. one bench. Okay. And uh, and so it was it was crazy. It was, every year was the same. We'd all hang out together. Okay, cool. And, uh, at lunch. And then later on, it wasn't until later uh, when I started actually jamming over at your garage with yeah. Rob yeah. when I met Michael. And Michael yeah. was kind of a 12-year-old punk. <laughs> he was. He was. Now, were you ever there? M Michael's big thing was to go in... And knock over all the equipment, oh, you know, when, when everybody was taking a break. Were you ever there when that happened? No, no, I never experienced that. Oh, he was a brat. Oh, was he? Yeah, <laughs> that's why Bob didn't want to work with him for oh, a long yeah. time. Well, yeah. But he's changed a little bit. He's still a brat, but he's a, gr <laughs> a grown-up brat now. Now, originally, you just wanted to be a guitar tech, but obviously that did not happen. So fill us in on 
on, well, uh, on that situation. But, you, a bit. you know, you got to always. You, my thought was you need to network. Yeah. And at the time, I, I'd already gone through high school. I was trying to get my own thing going, and it just wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, it was hard to get guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You remember that. They're I'm rare. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's hard to get good musicians, and everybody was either flaky or they were in something going somewhere Or they just else. wanted to get girls. Yeah, yeah whatever. And and, <laughs> and and uh and and I was willing to kind of get my foot in the door somehow. Yeah. yeah. And and then it, it, it as time went on, um I, I even think they asked me to be in the band one time and I turned them down. Yeah. That happened one time, uh, sometime yeah. in in the, towards the end of high school or whatever. And uh and I think Robert got a bad taste in his mouth with that and oh, yeah. and and um so um we we it, we did do one like I guess it was a high school uh, 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 lunchtime thing at Whittier High School. That was the first gig. It, that was the first time we played together anywhere. I in remember front of, that. Yeah, and I kind of blew it because I, I swore during the show and the principal came out and wanted to have me arrested. Well, that's I, okay. <laughs> well, you know what I remember about that? <laughs> it was your first gig, so you weren't, you know, you weren't cut in to what you were doing yet but I remember the night before that gig you and Mike being on the phone to real late do you remember that? Mm -mm. I don't remember that and I'm thinking what in the world is going on what are they talking about their set are they are they worried are they working out chords on songs because I remember you hadn't been in the band very long at all before that gig it was like one no, or two no. days. I, I think I was just doing the one gig to help them out Okay. But but I wasn't joining the band. Okay. And so and I think Rob asked me again to join the band after that, and I said no. So <laughs> it, it wasn't until you know, um, like I said, I tried to try to get something going on my yeah. own. I had a drummer yeah. that I was always playing with, and yeah. and and we just couldn't find the right guys, you know. And yeah. and and then some, we had a falling out one time with me and this drummer that I'd been yeah. with for a long time. And yeah, so, I think I remember hearing something about that. Yeah, yeah, we had a falling out, and and when that happened. I thought, you know what, you know, heck with this. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna, just gonna go join up uh, with uh, those guys. Uh, no, I actually I just said I'm gonna go network and get myself because I had already gone down to Hollywood.